Poop. A meter's dead. Good morning, everybody. Today is a big day. We're finally going to get started on the uh, clutch pedal, brake pedal box assembly. Uh, Got to build one for doing a manual five speed swap into Isaac's P7B Crown Vic. And so I've got a brand new 2003, 2005. Uh, Crown Vic brake pedal assembly to start out with. I bought this one because Isaac's car has the power pedals, so all that power pedal stuff has to get taken out and we have to switch over to the unit that doesn't have power pedals. And then I've got a clutch brake pedal assembly out of a 2000, uh, I think it's a 2003 Mustang. So we're going to harvest the clutch pedal portion out of the Mustang assembly and graft it onto the Crown Vic box. So yeah, I gotta start by taking this tube out of this box assembly by cutting the tack welds off of it and then sliding it out of there. And then we are going to take a piece of this structure out of the box and literally weld it onto uh, the Crown Vic unit from like here to here and it's going to wrap around and then the, this this tube is going to lay across the front of it. If you guys want to find the instructions on how to build these pedal boxes, um, the original guy is uh, Pierre. I believe his YouTube channel is Crown Vic Performance and you can find all the information on how to, to build these uh, pedal boxes for your Crown Vic. Also, uh, BP Builds on YouTube has a great video showing how he made his from scratch. I've already stripped everything off of here that I don't need anymore. I took the plastic quadrant off. Um, I believe the switch that used to be mounted right here is the clutch cancellation for cruise control. And then this switch on this side, the factory switch, I believe this, from what I can tell using my meter and checking the functionality of this switch, I believe this is the neutral safety switch. Uh, not neutral safety, but clutch safety switch so you don't start the car in gear. I'm going to put some kind of clutch safety switch on this thing, whether I use the factory one or an aftermarket switch. Like I'll be using an aftermarket brake light switch that goes in this hole right here. So let's see if we can zip this pedal off real quick. Pull this pin out of this switch because I don't want to break it just yet. Save all these little pieces of hardware. got a square drive onto the shaft. I don't want to jack that bushing up. There she goes. You can buy these bushings if need be. So eventually this is going to be about right in here. We'll be cutting this pad off, this whole thing. Actually, what I'm probably going to do is just cut the Mustang one off where it's got this little curve in it right here. I'm just going to cut that off and uh, graft it onto this one. There's lots of different ways to do that. This does obviously goes without saying this requires some welding. So if you don't have a welder, you're going to have to figure that part out or get somebody uh, to do it for you. So this bushing looks like it's in pretty good shape. I bought another one of these clutch pedal assemblies that um, it's missing the bushing so it's pretty clunky. So I'm just going to keep those bushings off for a moment to protect them. 
So this is, I gotta grind this weld off and try not to mess the tube up at the same time. So I'm gonna go do that real quick. I'll use a uh, angle grinder and a cutoff disc. I don't think y'all need to see, see that. I'm gonna do it outside uh, to keep the dust down in the garage and I'll be back in a few minutes. So we got our tube cut out of there. Now we're fixing to cut out the two inch by two inch, well two inch tall piece of the old box as our reinforcement. I'm just gonna use my angle grinder with a cutoff disc and cut that out real quick. We're ready to weld the reinforcement on. Just got it held in place with the uh, pair of ice grips. Pro we're approximately 2.5 inches from here to here. I don't know that that needs to be super critical because I think you've got enough pad on this reinforcement to place the tube. So I'm just going to go around and weld, you know, where it's making contact, but I don't know that every single square inch of it needs to be welded. I'm going to be using a MIG welder for this operation because it's what I have. And uh, let's see what kind of mess that I can make. Okay, so I got the reinforcement welded on. And I've got the clutch pedal tube in position. We've got the tube sticking out approximately 1.2 inches from the edge of the reinforcement and approximately 3.2 inches from this plate to the top of the tube. Now I'm going to see if I can weld that thin tube onto the reinforcement without burning a whole bunch of holes in it. And uh, once that happens, then I can move on to configuring the pedals. Y'all didn't really miss much. I got the tube welded on, obviously. And um, got the quadrant put on. This is a UPR quadrant. And I got the pedals modified. So we used to have that big old guy on there. Now we've got the Mustang one on there. So guys split so buy a new one on the Amazons um, so I chose to splice the brake pedal you couldn't break that off of there if you tried it's gonna be plenty strong enough and then the clutch pedal I shortened by lapping uh, cutting it in half and then overlapping the pieces if that makes sense I went ahead and kept the clutch pedal about a half an inch longer than the brake pedal. So it, it looks better than if you leave the Mustang pedal full length, but um, on that same note, I didn't want to make it exactly the same as the brake pedal because in my opinion, every bit of clutch uh, leverage that you have is easier on your leg. So I think it turned out pretty well. Um, I'm going to build a stop for the clutch pedal here. Probably weld a piece of angle steel in here um, so that the old pin from the old plastic quadrant can have something to hit and then the pedal can only pull out. The clutch pedal can only come out so far. Making a stop for going in I don't think is all that critical because really all you're going to do is push the pedal into the floor. I need to get the tab put on the brake pedal itself for the new brake switch to hit and I need to set up the clutch safety switch. But aside from that, that's where we're at at the end of day one. As I like to say in a lot of my videos. This is certainly not revolutionary, and I'm not the first one to have done this. Uh, like I said, check out Pierre 
and uh, I think it's Crown Vic Performance, like I said earlier, and also BP Builds. And I'm sure there's other guys, too, that have videos. Um, there's a lot of five-speed videos on YouTube into Crown Vics, but not so many of the guys that have actually built their own clutch and brake pedal box. Beck Arnley, 201, 1105. This is what we're gonna be using for the brake light switch. This is uh, normally closed. So that's lights off, that's lights on. This is gonna go right here. So there's a hole already in the Crown Vic uh, pedal box. That's gonna go in there. Here's our brake pedal assembly. So this tab right here, I believe, is to run the, uh, a switch that's already installed that goes in this slot. And I think that's for the ABS, but I'm not positive. I am going to take this little piece of scrap steel here, and I'm gonna weld this on right here to the pedal. And when this is inside of there, this little tab is gonna actuate the brake light switch. So I'll do that. Oh, and I got another little piece of scrap steel. This piece is gonna get welded on right here. It's gonna get welded on right here. And that's gonna be the clutch pedal stop. Like that. That's gonna set the outward pedal travel. which having that stop is going to help us utilize a clutch safety switch. So I've scoured Google for clutch safety switch pictures on people's pedals. Looks like there's been several different designs over the years that people have tried. I think for the sake of simplicity and keeping this compact and also keeping this switch from poking out from underneath the dashboard where it's visible, I found a nut that's the right thread for the Beck Arnley switch. And what I'm gonna do is take this nut, I'm gonna take the clutch pedal back out so I don't damage anything. And I'm gonna weld that nut onto the tube so that the switch can be threaded into it. And so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another piece of scrap steel and we're going to put a tab on the clutch actuation lever. And so if that plunger is depressed, the car won't start. And if you push in the clutch, um, it will lift the tab off the switch plunger, enabling the start. So I think that'll work. So I'm going to get to welding, and then I'll come back and kind of show the finished product. All the welding projects are done. I need one of Chuck's uh, shish kebab sticks, skewers, as a pointer. Here, let's use this expensive screwdriver. So I'm going to go over everything that's been welded. little recap. So we have this two inch piece of structure that was cut out of this box right here. This is the old uh, Mustang pedal box. So that's welded on across here, here, there, right there, and across some of the inside. Then we've got the tube cut out of the Mustang. Used to go right here. That is now welded onto that reinforcement couple of welds across the bottom. I did three across the top. I went ahead and scalloped this out right here. I've read that it's not necessary, um, but I figured all that little bit of extra clearance to let the brake pedal come out as far as it did when it was in the OEM position is good. This is the stop clutch pedal stop so that regulates uh, the out that regulates the outward travel of the pedal 
this pin right here from the old quadrant. Hits it right there. I did this nut right here for this switch. So this switch is gonna thread in there. I'm gonna use that as the clutch safety switch. We'll go into more of that later. I got this tab welded on right here. That tab is going to be running the new brake light switch. Got this tab welded on right here. This tab is gonna be running the clutch safety switch. So let's put this thing back together. See if I can remember how this goes. I think I'm gonna put the switch in first. I've got this nut on here to take up some of the space because I think it needs to come out a ways. Put a washer on there. Nut. Let's see it down inside of there. Think I'm going to tighten that up yet. Okay, so so that goes like that. This guy goes in like that. Okay, so that switch has got to come way out of there. That's barely going to work, but it's going to work. Let's put this bolt back in. Okay, now we're going to re-engage the spring. So this spring right here, it's got to come all the way up into this hole right here. Spring wrapped around the brake pedal lever. Spring coming out the hole right here. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is run the brake light switch in until 
it actuates. You want it close to be in a hair trigger, 14 millimeter. This is where I could use four hands. Okay. Let's test the brake light switch. Poop. A meter's dead. All right, after 10 years, the nine volt battery in my multimeter took a dump on me. So I'm gonna have to test the switch functionality later, but I have no doubts just by the way I can see it actuating that it's gonna work just fine. So right now with the pedal back, this circuit is open. There, it just clicked. That would light the brakes right now. The switch would be uh, closed. We are ready to now put the clutch pedal back in. Plastic bushing. Goes on there. Plastic bushing in this end. Okay, let's set up the clutch safety switch. This switch is not ideal for a clutch safety switch because it has a real short travel. So that guy's basically gonna get screwed all the way in. Then you can see the tab's gonna come down. All right, boys and girls, we're over here doing some uh, ghetto switch testing. I rigged up a ground and then hooked up my test light up. And we are utilizing the battery in the Corvette as a switch tester. Okay, so right now we're gonna pretend that the clutch is pushed down to the floor. So our switch would be making continuity, allowing the engine to crank. Now if the clutch pedal were to come back to the stop, no start, start, no start, So that one works. Let's test out the brakes. So we're gonna come up here. Let's tilt you guys back a little bit more, make sure you're in view. Non-polarity sensitive. We're gonna grab this guy with our alligator back down to the battery. So right now the brake lights should not be on. Not on. Gonna hit the brakes. He's gonna fly right by. Hopefully that's coming through on camera. Okay, so our switches work. Let's get back to building. So revision one already. I had to weld an extra little pad on here to get a little extra switch engagement. My icrometers was off a little bit, but that's okay, it happens. All right, we need our pedal. Clutch pedal, the infamous clutch pedal. My fresh paint job's getting all gunked up. Stop. Put our 
big nut back on. Okay, we just need to put the quadrant back on. And I think you got mail. I think we have a completed assembly. So with the UPR quadrant, you get this stack of washers. And what this does is it takes up all the space where the old clutch spring used to be. This guy. We can get rid of that. Shove our pin back in there. First day putting a pin in, I tell you what. Okay, if I haven't said okay enough, this little beauty is ready to go in the car. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the car tomorrow. I'm gonna wire the brake lights and um, then we're gonna get the gas pedal adapter made for this car since it has power pedals and we have to get rid of the power pedals. Then it's probably gonna get driven around for a couple of weeks with the clutch pedal just pushed to the floor, still as an automatic. If you have any questions so far on uh, how this is done, put them down in the comments below and I'll help as best as I can. Whilst I'm extremely happy with the way this has come out, um, if I build another one, I could see streamlining some things a little bit. But other than that, I'm happy with it. Stay tuned for part two. We'll try and get some filming of it going in the car tomorrow. Thanks for watching.